Hi guys, this is Sarah with Raven's Crochet. Welcome back to the channel. And my furry feline Raven is playing in a box. I've got stuff everywhere. I went shopping today, finally. I went and did a little bit of um, yarn therapy shopping at my local stores down the street. I have not been able to go to for months. So um, I feel better about being able to do that. Um, I have a piece, a very, very important piece that was part of the Happy Melt box that I got from M last week. I forgot to show you guys. Um, this is also from Premiere. But she sent me this color pack. Here we go. Premiere color pack. Twenty different little bitty skeins of yarn. It's anti-peeling acrylic. These, oh my gosh, I hope you guys can see these. Extremely vibrant, gorgeous colors. There is a sheen on the yarn. And I'm just amazed of all the stuff that she sends me. So I'm going to open it up and tell you about the yarn. They come in these little bitty skeins. They are a three lightweight yarn. It's so soft and squishy. Oh my goodness. And it's only 20 grams. Uh, a 7 ounce, 0.7 ounce skein, 54 yards, 50 meters. But, since the yardage is very little, the color selection is so gorgeous. Um, just this box alone, seeing how the yarn is presented, um, I mean, as you can see, it's four little skeins across and then five skeins down. I can make a cute little, just solid granny square with each of these. And then I can orient them. I can, I can keep them this way. I can, I'll, pro I'll more than likely rearrange the colors so they have more of like an ombreish rainbow effect. And I'll make a granny square with each of these and I will orient them four granny squares across, four granny squares down, and I will sew them up with a charcoal gray or a black. Um, I could even use cream or white and I can border each of these squares and then this will make like about a, th I want to say a throw size blanket, a little bit bigger than a lapgan. The label says in total it is 400 grams of yarn at 1,080 yards, 1,000 meters, 14 ounces. Again, this is 100% anti-peeling acrylic, and it is a lightweight number three. And just, I have this sitting on the floor in my living room. She says she had ordered this for me for Christmas. It was one of those things that was supposed to go underneath my Christmas tree. But, um, you know, with her being sick and everything, um, you know, she couldn't send it um, until recently. So I'm just, I have it on the floor in my living room. I'm just kind of like oogling at it every day because I have so many other things I'm trying to work on right now. Um, I got to talk to you guys about the temperature throw because I'm I'm still playing catch up with that. Um, I'm just about done with my feeling festive shawl. That's the next thing I was going to talk to you guys about. I'm almost done with that cake. I used a mohair cake from Ice Yarns that I bought months ago and... This is what I've got so far. Isn't this gorgeous? This is where I started with like an orchard plum color. And it faded into like a golden rod, lemon, lemony yellow. And then all these colors transpired from it. And right now I'm back to this mossy green color. And there's a couple more colors after this, um, but it's just about done. This is following the pattern, um, and to me, this it's it, it's called a filling festive shawl, and I follow the pattern with a lightweight three, and this is so narrow for me. It's pretty much a scarf. This is not a shawl for me. I like things wider, wider. So I'm working on another filling festive shawl right now. I'll give you a little teaser peek of the yarn. Beautiful uh, dark gray sparkle and this other multicolored yarn that I bought from Ice Yarns. Here's the skein. 
beautiful purple tones, grape tones, and champagne, taupey mauve colors. And then the gray yarn I'm using is Big Twist Twinkle. And I'm using a six millimeter crochet hook. And I can't tell you the pattern because it's a um it's it's the link is in the description box below. It's only a dollar for the pattern, but it is so easy to follow. And Z as Zelda in RJ3, she has a great little swatch tutorial on how to do it. And, and this is something I got in the mail today. Um, this is for a giveaway I'm going to be doing soon. I'm finally out of quarantine and I can, I'm not sick anymore. And well, I never felt sick. I never had a fever, nothing, but I can finally put a, a giveaway together. I'm not quite to 1000 subscribers, but as soon as I hit that mark, I will be doing a giveaway. I've not really been in a hurry for that. This channel is pretty much just my leisure, my leisure crochet vlog, pretty much. Um, and spreading good messages, but anyways, um, I have like so much stuff going on that I want to share with you guys. I've got bags everywhere. I went, I did some shopping. So, um, I did some Amazon shopping. I had to get some lint rollers that I use and I ordered some baking soda for cleaning and deodorizing and a few other things. Um, I got some flexible fabric glue. I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you guys about this. I mentioned this previously in one of my last videos that if you are worried about your crochet tail ends unraveling, like once you weave them in and you're finishing your work, if you're worried about them coming un unraveled, you can use this glue. Now, if you're familiar with Tiffany Hansen over at her channel, she uses this glue in a lot of her projects when she weaves in her ends. Um, you want to make sure, excuse me, that your glue that you are going to be using not only dries clear, but it has to be able to dry flexible because it is a fabric, it is a garment, it is a towel, whatever you're making, it's flexible, it's, it's yarn. So you want to make sure this is flexible and clear so no one can see it, right? Um, so a lovely yarny friend here in the community, thank you so much for leaving me this link. She sent me the email to the link for this and I will also include that in the de description box below for this particular glue right here it was only six bucks and it's a nice size four ounce bottle you can see it's as big as my hand flexible stretchable fabric glue permanent fabric adhesive for t-shirts knits and stretch fabrics and you want to make sure, it's, and I, I even scrolled down, I wrote through the description of the product and I made sure that it specified that it dries clear and flexible. Dries clear, non-toxic for embellishing stretchable fabrics. Um, I'm not sure if here on the bottle it says drying flexible. It does say dries clear, but it does specify that it does say for stretch fabrics and knits. Pre-wash the garment, stretch fabric, and then apply glue so adhesive penetrates properly. Push embellishment into glue to form in setting. Clean excess with damp cloth. Let dry for 24 hours. Dries clear but may be visible with a dark or wet appearance on some colors or fabrics. Do not soak. So it doesn't say flexible, but because it said flexible, dries flexible in the description of the product, I was okay with purchasing this. And because it says flexible and stretchable fabric glue, this will suffice as to the closest thing I can get. Because although my craft, my local craft stores may carry some kind of flexible drying clear glue, um, I was just not able to get to it. So, um... Aside from my local stores that didn't have it. But anyways, I'm going to test this out myself and make sure it works. I'm going to use it on the ends on my filling festive shawls and the gray and purple one I'm working on. And, um, and then I'm going to wash and dry them and see how that goes. If you have used this product, if you have any recommendations, if you are all for it, then please let us know in the comments. That would be really appreciated. But, um, I feel safe using this on my products. I got some yarn to make baby blankets, and that's one thing I wanted to show you guys. 
So do you guys want to see what's in this little bag of this little notions and hook case? I got this to put in giveaway, remember? And I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. I'm not going to open everything. But these are pretty much the exact same type of hooks that I started out with. They are modeled just like the clover hooks. They're not clover hooks, but they're modeled after them. And they're so fun because they're all different colors. They all have the same sizes engraved and printed on them. These are tapered hooks. And aren't they just so beautiful? This entire pack is going to go into giveaway. I'm so excited. And then it comes with some stitch markers, some darning needles, and a seamstress tape. So, and, and, and with a really nice little zipper pouch case. So I thought this would be really nice to put in a giveaway. Because I care about you guys so much. And I really appreciate you guys being here um, and watching the channel. I, I do have some yarn I've been collecting too. So, hi Raven. Hi babe girl. She's looking for a pathway to d die from the couch. Last night we were sitting up here while well, I was sitting up here. And I was watching Netflix and she was literally just all over the couch. She's like, Raven, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you the yarn I got from Walmart first. Because it's right here on top. But the Walmart purchase was my third and last trip. Um, the first place I went to was Ollie's. And then I went to Dollar Tree. And then I went to Walmart. But... I'm going to show you the Walmart yarn first because it's sitting here. So the first yarn I got were these Red Heart metallic skeins. I always like to have these laying around. I always use them for different projects. This yarn is great for Christmas. It's great for Easter. It's great for Valentine's. It's great for birthdays. It's great for using for like any kind of like party, celebratory parties. If you want to crochet a hat with it and, and coordinate your favorite colors with it. This is pretty much the rainbow metallic sparkle. Isn't that beautiful sparkle? This is Red Heart Super Saver Metallic. They are, they are five ounce skeins. 142 grams, 255 yards, 233 meters. Four worsted weight acrylic. I believe it's 100% acrylic. It's made in Turkey. Turkey is one of the best places to, to, um, to get yarn. Yeah, it's a four weight, 98% acrylic, 2% other fibers, which is pretty much the metallic lyric sparkle. And it is OEKO tech certified, which means it has been tested in, uh, against 100 plus harmful substances, which means this is safe for sensitive skin. If you have skin irritations, um, and, and this is good for like baby soft skin. It won't irritate fragile skin or really rough dry skin. Um, and it's soft and cozy enough for the average person to be able to, to tolerate. And um, Red Heart Super Saver is not the softest, but this metallic is actually pretty darn soft. It's much, much softer in my opinion than your basic Red Heart Super Saver. Um, so if you ever see Red Heart Super Saver Metallic, just feel it and see for yourself. I think it's so much softer than your basic Red Heart Super Saver. Um, they had two left on the shelf, so I got both of them. And then I went ahead and got a couple of these cakes. I love this colorway. This one is called Nova on that colorway. There's a color swatch on the ball band that gives you an idea of how it's worked up. Raven is actually spazzing right now. Um, these colors just remind me of just like gentle, elegant beauty. And I think it would make a gorgeous, a gorgeous baby blanket or a scarf. My sister, I think, would love these colors. And they're sparkling. And look at the sparkle. And that is so gorgeous. It's like a, a taupey beige colors and creams and pinks, like baby, baby, I'm not big on the baby pink in here, but I love the whole entire color effect of these cakes. This is Lion Brand Mandela Sparkle. And again, the colorway is called Nova. 
They are 3.5 ounce cakes, 100 grams, 328 yards, 300 meters. They are a three lightweight yarn. So I'm interested to work up like a floral um, blanket. I think I'm either going to, I'm going to start from the center and either work up a floral blanket. It's a two row repeat. It's a, it's a shell. It's a round of shells. The frame, actually, I'm sorry. It's the, it's a round of framework which mostly um, consists of V-stitches and chains. And then the round two is the shell round. It's like seven double crochet in the V-stitches. And then back and forth, frame work and then shell work. That would be gorgeous, worked up in this, in this color. Um, or I will do like a lacy scarf and just go back and forth and do a, a lacy scarf. It, it's a, it's a row, one row repeat. It's the one that I like where it's the two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the same stitch. And then you um, skip over to the next shell and repeat. Um, and then you have a double crochet on both ends. And that's a beautiful, that would be a beautiful stitch with this. So I've got a couple of good ideas with these. I always like to have some kind of idea for the yarn before I buy it. So I'm not just buying yarn. That helps with my budget. And it helps me cut back on the amount of space that I'm able to have with my yarn, you know, so. Now this one, I almost bought the blue and the green one. This is a beautiful yarn. It's so incredibly soft. I've never bought this yarn before. I've never worked with it. But given this color pattern and since there are more girls in my family, I really wanted to work this up on my knitting loom and make some hats. Three weight yarns I have experienced myself and watching other channels and vit tutorials that three weight yarns are best to use on the knitting loom when it comes to hats, scarves, socks, stuff like that. Um, you know, like house socks, you know, like slipper socks, not like tennis shoe wearing socks, you know. Um, obviously one weight yarns are great for the nicer socks. Um, but because of the print, look at this print. The colorway name is called Tiny tulip right above the barcode right below the barcode tiny tulip and i can just look at that i mean it reminds me of bloom premier bloom now this is burnett obviously this is not premier but it reminds me of the premier bloom of what the pattern would do so i'm really interested to see if little tiny tulips work up if i do like a little hat and my niece my two-year-old niece right she is in size seven eight-year-old toddler clothing so if I make a regular adult size beanie for my sister, my two year old niece can wear it. No problem. She's got a big head. So I'm going to make a couple of those with this, given the fact that there are 861 yards and I might make a matching scarf to go with it. And it'll be a lightweight, weight scarf. They can use it for chillier days. Um, and um, if I like it all that much, I'll go buy another one. This is like almost $7 a skein. So I only wanted to start with one. If I like it, I'll go back and buy the blue one. It had like a touch of mint green It was and it was white. Like this one has white. And um, that one was just called, um, it had like a weird name to it though. It was, it was just called like something simple though. I can't remember. I can't remember if you're if you're familiar with Burnett Baby Sport Sport Weight, then um you'll know what I'm talking about. But I can't remember the colorway name. Um, but this one again is called Tiny Tulips, and it's mostly pink, a little bit of orchard purple, and a lot of actually lime green in there, and a touch of peach, a touch of like an orangey peach. So it looks beautiful and it's so soft too. And in the content fiber, since I'm telling you about it, again, it's 861 yards. It's two, um, it's 787 meters, 8.5 ounce skein, 240 grams. It is 100% acrylic. It is machine washable and dryable. Now I found a magazine. Had to buy a crochet magazine because it had been several months since I even had been to Walmart. Um, Before we get to the magazine though, I was looking at the, the fabric remnants. The yarn in the Walmart department has get, been getting smaller and smaller. It's funny how the yarn department in Walmart has been getting smaller 
and then the the yarn department in Ollie's across the street has been getting bigger. They had an entire aisle full of yarn at, at Ollie's, so I didn't buy as much yarn um, at Walmart as I did Ollie's. Well, I still didn't buy that much because I'm on a budget. I got to keep my spinning low. But, and plus the space. I don't have a lot of space for yarn. Let's face it. I need to put up more shelves and I need to find a new carpenter. <laughs> I would do it myself, but I can't go get the shelves. So I need somebody to bring me the shelves and then I can pick them up. But anyways, fabric remnants. Look what I found. This to me just screams summer. I'm going to cut this open and share it with you guys. This is a two yard fabric remnant, which means um, a remnant is it just, it has it has raw edges and I'm going to gently cut this label off and I'm thinking about using this fabric as a beach cover top um, you just cut the label right off no big deal I can throw that away and it's pretty much just a sheer piece of fabric you see how thin this is very very thin very easy to sew with but it stretches on the bias a lot but it doesn't stretch that much on the opposite grains but this being two yards this will be a nice beach cover-up or a wrap all I have to do is get out my serger and I can I can cut the salvage off right with the serger and one strip and then I can um, I can go around all four sides like that I can use a hot pink thread wouldn't that be cool look at this fabric I can use a hot pink thread with that fabric it's so pretty I like the fabric I think it's gorgeous and to me it just screams summer and I could find you know this would look cute with like a with a hot pink bathing suit or even like a turquoise color bathing suit. I think this fabric is gorgeous. So I got this for a beach cover up. I thought that was really cool. The magazine now that I got is called Crochet World. If I'm not mistaken, I laughed when I saw this pattern, when I saw the photo of this. I think this is the same magazine that another podcaster was talking about. Jennifer at Cinnamon Stitches, and um, I know I mention her a lot. I just I watch her videos all the time. She makes me laugh. She made a little mushroom character, kind of like this one. And when she was talking about it in her video, it hadn't even crossed my mind. I thought it was just a most adorable little thing. But the rainbow yarn that is used is adorable. So these are all the patterns that you get. And there's an advertisement on the back. And this again is called Crochet World, issue number 34. And it's $5.99 US at my local store, which was Walmart. This is the April issue. They will, they will display until the 25th. And it says on the front, um, America's Favorite Crochet Magazine, April 2022. So if you are interested... And taking a gander at this magazine. Um, and again, these are the patterns that you will find in this issue. It's one thing I love about this. I can just immediately flip right to the back. I don't have to flip through the magazine and, and mess it all up. And put my skin oil all over the pages. I can just see what's right there on the back. And okay, I like that. I like that. If I like more than three things in a magazine, I'll buy it. Well, I bought it just because of the mushroom and because it's crochet. Uh, there was another crochet magazine that I would have bought, but there was literally only one, maybe two patterns in there that I liked. It just wasn't worth it to me to buy it. And plus, I don't crochet a lot of patterns from magazines typically because I have so much other stuff. I kind of just kind of create offhand in my mind. Um, or I get small ideas from other podcasters. Um, I also got a simple notebook. I love this size notebook. It's about the size of a happy planner. It's a little bit smaller. Um, it, it's big enough. It's small enough. It'll fit in a Bible case. 
and it has um, it's college ruled. I like college ruled. I have more room to write, and I like when they have pockets in them because I have like little pieces of paper that accumulate, and it's got a pocket on both sides, and. I like the fact that I can bend this back, like if I'm writing like a whole bunch of something, if I'm writing a pattern down, I can flip through here and I can make my book smaller and I can flip either way and I can write down. Um, so that's one thing I like about those kind of notebooks. That was only like $2. Okay, so we're going to backtrack. Since I went to Ollie's first and then Dollar Tree and then Walmart. I showed you Walmart first, now I'm going to show you Dollar Tree, and then I'll show you Ollie. So we're just going to be backwards with that, since my bag is sitting here from Dollar Tree. I got a whole bunch of stuff, not just yarn related. I'm always getting my straws. These are great for when the kids come over. They're those bendy straws, like a dollar, a dollar for like, usually you get like a hundred. This one's got 80, but you know, and then... I'm always buying these tissues. When I go to Dollar Tree, I always buy these. You get eight little packets of traveling tissues, facial tissues. Um, so I always get a bunch of those. And I got some loofahs. I like my liquid soap and my, my shower loofahs, and I got a couple of those. And I got some socks. I've never tried these socks before, but I like crew socks. And so I got these to try. These are from Dollar Tree. They had hot pink ones, but I'm more of, of a purple fan, so I got a couple of these just to try. I don't know if I'll like them, so um, I've not tried them. I got a pair of house slippers for me, unicorn. Not much into pink. You know, there's a lot of pink on it, but it's a unicorn. Unicorns make me happy, and they're mostly gray, and I don't mind the sports striping. So these would be just nice little house socks to wear for when my feet get cold. Um, I tend to wear socks more than slippers myself. Um, this is not yarn related, but it's craft related. Um, I bought this with a purpose. This is a two pack of wreath. Um, they're, they're wreath rings, those wire framings for wreaths. You know, like you get the big ones, but these are the smaller ones. You know, as big as my head. Well, it's a two pack. So I can make one for two different occasions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap yarn around one of these with like an ombre multi-colored striping yarn. I'm going to do like an ombre, like a wrap, just wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. And I'll, pro I'll probably actually just kind of crochet around it. So I'm not having to ball up yarn and then wrap. I might just probably crochet and then I'll have, and then I'll, I'll leave like the little crochet stitches on the inside. And then, um with the uh, and then I'm not sure what I'm going to do with one but I uh, except for the fact that it's going to have the ombre striping effect the other one is going to have the same striping effect I'm going to have some kind of gorgeous yarn for the background on this wreath and then I'm going to sew it into a dream catcher with those stitches I'm going to crochet around it and so I'll have the stitches around the inside here and then I'll be able to take a darning needle and stitch um, into those sewing, into those crochet stitches, and I'll be able to make the dream catcher center weave in the middle, and then I can crochet some feather shapes or something. I can make a dream catcher, and, and I can make it'll be like a wall hanging. The other one I can put on my front door, and I can redecorate it for Easter, Valentine's, St. Patrick's Day, any other holiday coming up. So I had that in mind to decorate these, put one on the door. And maybe put one on the inside of my door because I'm always sitting here and the inside of my door doesn't have anything hung, hung on it right now. It's bare. So I could do like a double sided door wreath hanger with yarn, some cool, fun colored yarn. So that's um, craft section Dollar Tree. So I thought that was an awesome idea. I didn't buy much yarn at Dollar Tree, I was actually a little disappointed. They did have some more green. For me, just green. It seems like every time I go to Dollar Tree, I can only find, I can only find three to five skeins of green. Last time I went, I could only find three green. Today, I found three green. This one is deep green, and these are called green. But this to me looks like a pine, like a forest green. It's like a like a dark green varsity green, you know. 
like a very beautiful pine varsity green. And to me, this, this looks like a moss green. Like very good for floral arrangements. Uh, this is Premier Just Yarn Worsted, number four. It's 100% acrylic, 131 yards each, 120 meters, 2.11 ounces, 60 gram skeins. So I got those three. And then I had to get some chocolate around St. Patty's Day, these little golden nugget chocolate thingies. I always got a kick out of these as a kid, so I bought some. I wouldn't trade these golden nuggets for the whole of Illinois. <laughs> I got a sticker book for my happy planner that my yarny friend sent me. And it's got some really cute metallic decals on it. And the pineapples really caught my eye. I'm all about the pineapple. And it's got reminding sections, little pieces you can write on things that you can use in your planner. It's got solid hearts and things that you can tag and bold and highlight um, here we go. to do, things like that. And the paw print, I love anything that has to do with animals and paw prints. Do small things with great paws. So that's how I'm reading that. And so I thought that was a cute sticker book. Of course, I had to get Raven some stuff. I got her a stash of catnip. And again, I love, my cat loves these treats. If you like getting your cat treats and you shop at Dollar Tree, I recommend these. They are, they are soft and chewy. And they are really good to give to your cats if you primarily give, give them crunchy food. Every once in a while, give them something soft. And it'll really help with their gums too especially if it's been really hard for them to chew crunchy foods um try to alternate if you can if you have an animal and you primarily feed them crunchy food try to alternate with softer foods if you can um do some experimenting try a few different brands a few different flavors see what your animal likes doesn't like that's what i spent a year doing that that with raven and um i pretty much give her tuna now. I give her human canned tuna food that I would eat from the grocery store. I give her half a can at a time and that's pretty much a meal for her. So I give her her dry in the morning and then I give her her half a can of tuna in the evening and then she gets a couple of snacks in between throughout the day and then, and then that's it. That's her portions. But you portion their feedings per their requirements, per your animal. Um, but try vice versa and if you give them soft food give them a crunchy treat every once in a while you know mix it up for them um always need a, a, a new yarn bag i like going down the toiletry aisle where the socks are and the bags are and um some of the men's socks and everything this is a men's travel bag and i thought it might make a good yarn bag i'm trying to figure out how to open oh, here it is Open sesame. So this is just a pretty much just a cheap little zipper polyester bag. I think it's polyester. Made in China, of course. And black plaid is simple and it's neutral. It's a boxed bag. And it's got black interior, which is just fine. I, I, would, I was half expecting black interior to be in a men's travel bag. You know, it's primarily going to be used for toiletries, right? But I wanted to see if I could use it for a yarn bag. I could use it for a travel bag, of course, what it was intended for. But that's about how big it is. And the zipper runs down the middle. And then it has a handle. So I primarily could carry it over my wrist. I would have this bag zipped up at least halfway closed, if not all the way. And then you, I could stick my wrist through, and then my little bitty, whatever small project I was working on could sit in here, and I could just... I actually, last year when I went to the county fair, I actually had a small crochet project 
Um, I don't primarily walk and crochet at the same time, but I was trying to finish up a bottle, a water bottle slinger so that we could actually use it walking around at the state fair. I like to make the water bottle slingers, sling them over my body. I don't have to worry about carrying a bottle of, 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 of fluids. I can just, I have my drink and I don't have to hang on to it. Um, I was getting so many compliments from people walking past people. I was literally crocheting the handle on this water bottle slinger as we were walking through the gate, you know, getting our ticket stubs and all that stuff and going through security, you know, having to check my bag and my crochet hook, my scissors, all that stuff. And then ordering my chicken thigh and, and my sweet tea and everything. And she's like, man, you a boss. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm almost done. I'm trying to finish. So something like this would be perfect. You're out walking around, you go to the park, you know, with your, with your, with your loved ones or whatever. You can have like all your little crochet stuff right here. <laughs> so I'm all about that. Um, I found this, you know, it's Easter. So they got the Easter stuff out. I got this to give to one of my little nephews. I'm going to make a little lovey to go with this. And for the loveys, I like using these elastic ponytail holders. I got a couple of these. And I figured, you know, the gray mix and black's perfect. I can still use the black and gray ones in my hair. If I want to bedazzle the blanket, I could use a sparkly one or just a simple gray one. So the idea is to crochet into the center ring of the elastic band enough times so that, so that way you can crochet granny stitches around it and end up making a square. And then it's elastic so you can stretch the little lovey over the stuffed toy. When you go to wash the blanket, you can take the blanket off the toy, wash the blanket, the toy's okay, it won't get runned, and then when the blanket's all clean, the little, the little lovey, it stretches back over the toy's head, and then you've got your little lovey all cleaned up. So that's the great idea about using the elastic bands when you make a lovey. Um, and there's typically 36 single crochets in the center. I did, I did a small little tutorial on this. And... Um, and then it's typically about 13 rows of crocheted grannies, granny stitches, 13 rows. Um, and I usually do about 12 rows, maybe 13, and then I'll do the 13th row with the border. Um, I'll do like some kind of shell stitch or something, whatever. So I got a couple of these, you know, one for my hair and one for the, one for, one for to make the loveys with. And this little cute little boy bunny, blue bunny, they had one that was primarily purple with a touch of pink. And then they had one that was like a pastel rainbow bunny. It was so, they were so adorable. Um, hi, Mia. Baby girl, it's Cece and it's all over the place. Hi, baby, I know. Mommy's doing a yarn video. I gotta wrap it up, guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue this in the next video. Um, because I have so much here still to show you guys. Um, that's pretty much it for Dollar Tree. So my very next video, I'm going to pop in and I will show you guys what I got from Ollie's. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Love you guys. Bye-bye.